the intricate negotiations to try to keep a nuclear bomb out of the hands of the Iranian regime. Today we learned negotiations with Tehran will drag on even longer, at least through Monday. For weeks now, the U.S. and five other countries have sat at a table trying to negotiate limits on Iran's nuclear program. Today, the EU's top foreign policy official called this morning's meeting constructive, but if no deal can be reached, will Monday be the end of discussion? Secretary of State John Kerry insists talk, talks will not go on forever. If the tough decisions don't get made, we are absolutely prepared to call an end to this process. Joining me now, Republican Senator Tom Cotton, a member of the Armed Services Committee and in Senate Intelligence Committee, also a, a, a veteran of the Armed Forces as well. Thanks for joining me, Senator. Thanks, um, what is your understanding of where talks stand right now? Well, we've had another four-day extension, uh, and I think that we're continuing to teach Iran a very bad lesson, that the window for diplomacy never closes. That we, they can continue to get extensions and continue to get concessions or even put new uh, issues on the negotiating table. So I don't know if there's been any progress made in recent days, but I do know that these continued extensions of deadlines are teaching Iran a very bad lesson. Well, why is the window for diplomacy is never closed? Why is that a bad lesson? Because every time we've had one of these extensions, we've seen Iran walk back from their previous concessions or demand new uh, concessions from the United States. For instance, three months ago, they walked back from their previous commitment to ship all of their uranium out of the country or to close their underground fortified bunker. Now they are demanding that we lift the conventional arms embargo, not nuclear-related sanctions or embargo, but conventional arms embargo, at the same time that they're going to be getting tens of billions of dollars in the signing bonus. What do you think they're going to use that money for if they want the arms embargo listed? They're going to buy, use it to buy more weapons so they can destabilize the Middle East even more. You and I have talked before uh, about your view that the military option should be on the table. I want to play some sound uh, for you uh, from your fellow Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who's also running for president. Uh, I asked him uh, what he would do uh, when it came to n dealing with uh, Iran and negotiations. Take a listen. If I'm president of the United States and they want to try to break out nuclearly, a nuclear breakout. We're not just going after your facilities. We're going after your offensive capability. We're going to sink your Navy and we're going to shoot your Air Force down. If that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. You have talked about taking out the nuclear facility, but I don't think I've heard you say anything about going after the Iranian Navy or Air Force, as Senator Graham says. What do you think of that? Well, well, military action is not the preferred choice here. It shouldn't be the first choice, nor would it be, but it has to remain a viable option on the table. And military action would not simply target Iran's nuclear facilities. It would, in fact, have to target their command and control facilities, their air defense systems, their coastal defense systems. And I'm confident that the United States military has the capability to do so. In fact, just this week at a hearing before the Senate Armed Services Committee, I asked Marine General Joe Dunford, who is going to be the next chairman of the Joint chiefs if the United States has that military capability. And he said, yes, it does. And, and lastly, I guess a lot of people would look at your position and say, look, at the end of the day, we don't want to go to war in the Middle East again. And President Obama is pushing for a peaceful resolution to Iran getting nuclear weapons. Why wouldn't you at least favor that diplomatic effort more so than another Middle East war? Well, unfortunately, the president's two goals of stopping nuclear proliferation and stabilizing the Middle East are actually undermined by the course of action he's taken. You can see that in what's happened in Syria and Iraq with the Islamic State, but you can also see it in the reaction of some of our Gulf partners, like the Emiratis or the Saudis, who are more anxious than ever and are building up their own defenses because they realize that a nuclear Iran is a grave threat not only to the United States, but also to the regional stability. Senator Tom Cotton, thanks for being here, and congratulations again on your baby boy. Thank you.